What is up guys, welcome back. I am so excited to finally be filming this video. This is like a deep cut for the people who have been watching for a while. And I kept kind of talking around this idea that I had for a video where I was like, I wanna talk about products that are beautifully boring, incredibly reliable, the kinds of things that like never make it into videos because they're not new and they're not sparkly and they're not exciting. You know, like I did make videos about some of these when they were new, but they're things that I reach for all the time in my personal makeup routine. And I believe that they are so underrated. They are the things that I wish people talked about more. They are brands that I wish people talked about more. And they're products that just do an incredible amount of heavy lifting per product. Like the formulas are so ultra gorgeous and like high tech as far as I'm concerned that accomplish so much and they're fun and they're easy to use. You will not be surprised at all to see that like Bare Minerals is included in this video. That is one of my absolute favorite brands that I always harp on the fact they don't put out a whole lot of product all the time. You know what I mean? They're not just constantly cranking out new releases, but their formulas are so reliable. And whenever I say that, I get all these comments from people being like, yes, sing the praises of Bare Minerals because their stuff is just subtly incredible. And there are just so many products like that in my collection that I feel like I just don't get a chance to talk about that often. So look, I mean, look at this face of makeup, guys. I'm obsessed with it because it's so, like, this is actually not very much product at all. Like everything is applied in kind of like a low key wash. There's really, really not a whole lot of actual like layers of makeup on my face, but every single one just does more than the sum of its parts. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. But first, for the last time this year, guys, I want to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. They're giving us one last massive deal before the holidays. They are offering up to 25% off site-wide for all your gifting needs. If you're unfamiliar with Ana Luisa, they're my favorite jewelry company. They do all in-house recycled gold plating on their jewelry and I just want to talk about the diversity of their styles today and I'm just showcasing my ears for you guys. Like this month, I just went with my ears. This right here, I need to put the, I'll put the names on the screen so that I don't just bog you down with details, but look at this thing. Can you see it? This thing is outrageous. It is this beautiful ear cuff and it's got all these little rhinestones inside in it with little like raised pyramids. That looks like couture to me. I think it is so beautiful. Then we have this guy, which is like ultra sleek, right? It's just got this really cool kind of like beveled edge on it. And it's really easy to get ear cuffs on and off. You don't have to squeeze them or anything. You just kind of slide them over the skinniest part of your ear right there. And then you slide them down. That's it. And I turn red when you think about touching my skin. So don't, <laughs> don't take offense. And these are all like part of collections so that like if an ear cuff isn't your speed, there are other styles that kind of follow these same aesthetics. And then I also, this one, this is custom, okay? Talk about couture. Um, this is actually just like a regular little ear climber. You know, it's got like that little, it's supposed to turn out so that it, you know, climbs up your ear with the, uh, the piercing, but I place it over my plug and it just adds this like, look at that. This like cool like rhinestone crown for my plug. This is what I'm talking about. I love the, the flexibility and like how these pieces allow me to be creative. And as far as gifting is concerned, I watch other creators that are like friends of mine also wear Ana Luisa in their videos. And like Kyla, for example, Kyla Fish, she is I think 20 now. And so she has a very different kind of aesthetic and different tastes as far as her jewelry is concerned. And the stuff she picks out off of Ana Luisa is so her. It's like so cool and like personal to her style. And that's why I think that it's really, really fun to shop their website for like holiday gifts and for gifts in general is just because there's something for everybody. There's really, really beautiful, minimal, simple kind of stuff that's super timeless looking for like your minimal aesthetic friends. And then there's just a really cool like current stylish more trendy looks and very like creative like artistic looking stuff that makes more of a statement it's more of like a pop you know because I like to you know dress kind of like chic and polished and then I love having kind of a pop of surprise like something unexpected like a safety pin through my ear and if you're like me or you know someone like me who really likes to express themselves through their appearance and through their jewelry and things there's something to be said for knowing that a company also shares your sustainability values and so they are carbon neutral and 
all their stuff starts at $39 and that's before the discounts. So I shop them all the time on my own dollar. And some of my most cherished pieces that I'm really excited to wear every day are from Ana Luisa and they have really stood the test of time. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed a tour of my ears today. Click on the link down below in my description box to shop their holiday sale up to 25% off site wide. And without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this face of underrated underdog bangers. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is <laughs> this, which you guys have asked me about in the comments many, many times. I have DM'd people about it, but I've never used it on camera. Bare Minerals put me on their PR list not that long ago, but I don't get that much stuff from them because they are not known for just cranking out dime a dozen flash in the pan products, right? And this is one of their like oldest mainstay products. It is the Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. This is a broad spectrum SPF 30, but it is titanium dioxide, 6.2%. So it doesn't have the chemical sunscreens in it that typically irritate my skin. It says gel cream, but it's like this interesting kind of like whipped texture. It reminds me a little bit actually of the Laura Mercier except that's a chemical sunscreen, so I can't wear it, but I have the shade, I should mention that, Opal 01, and this is one of those tints that can be worn like alone. You know what I mean? You can absolutely spread it out thinly enough that you can't really tell you're wearing a foundation per se. It just adds this beautiful blur to the skin. The titanium dioxide definitely helps with that, but you can also build it up because it's got a phenomenal dry down and get kind of like a fuller coverage build wall kind of finish from it. And it does have a nice kind of skin finish. There's a reason that this is something that, you know, people swear by. I just don't know why people don't talk about it that often because it feels like like a holy grail formula, you know? It feels like something that someone would be like, well, you know, if I'm gonna go back to the basics, it's gonna be this. And for whatever reason, I guess just because I was so late to the game, I never found a reason or a way to like integrate this into a video, but look at that, look at that. Look at that finish. And for all those with anxiety, I did not put that like below <laughs> my chin. I don't wanna get it on my sweater. But yeah, you can still see my freckles through it. It still allows for me to, I don't know, have flexibility with concealer and things like that to build coverage where I want it, but it is just the most beautiful skin finish. And the dry down, I know I already said it, but the dry down is super satisfying. Like you can almost like feel it kind of lock into place in a really, really nice way, but it still feels hydrating. I actually am fond of all of the Bare Minerals complexion products that I have tried. I like the Bare Pro. I like the, wait for it, Liquid Minerals. Actually, the only thing that I didn't like was the Liquid Mineral Concealer, but that was because like the colors were so weird. I thought I bought my shade and it was like wildly dark and yellow. I kind of did a mea culpa in that video. I was like, I don't know what I did wrong. And everybody was like, you didn't do anything wrong. The same thing happened to me, etc. So I don't know what happened with that product. But I'm also going in with the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Concealer. It is great. It is one of the only cream, like stick concealers I have ever liked. Because most of the time to get something to be stable in this form, it doesn't have like a whole lot of technology in it, you know? It'll go on nicely, but it won't wear very well, or it'll kind of get like, I don't know, temperamental about the coverage level that it wants and not really want to play with other products or with other coverage levels. This one is so agreeable. I have this in the shade Fair Cool 01, and it is so easy. I think another thing that's really frustrating about a lot of these is like they feel like they have to warm up in order to spread on your skin. And so you end up kind of dragging them quite a bit. And this one is not, it's so perfectly soft. So I am just going to grab my little foundation brush here from Beauty Pie. Again, I just need 18 of these. The number goes up every time. I'm like, I need a dozen, I need 16, I need 18. Can you tell I'm prone to hyperbole? I do enjoy a good hyperbole. It's stormy outside. It actually isn't very cold today, but like, we need rock-a-doodle. <laughs> Shout out to Claire. The sun didn't come up today. Oh my gosh, it like blends itself. I don't know why. I guess just because they're not new, you know? Like I said, it's like, we all tend to kind of focus on new things because it's the new shiny object, but 
especially when it comes to complexion products, but pretty much anything that you're gonna wanna put on every single day. Like you want that formula to be something that is not just cooperative, but like you look forward to putting it on because it pleases your eye and it's like fun, you know? So that's, that's the vibe there. I don't use any kind of skin filters or anything, but I also don't have any natural light today. So <laughs> bear with me if, you know, it looks a little bit better than reality. I'm working entirely with artificial light today. But like, so easy, right? And I could have worn only the concealer, or I could have worn very, very little of the foundation. And it could have just been like a no makeup makeup kind of vibe. You know what I mean? You don't have to get this much coverage out of either one of them. They're super flexible, super agreeable. That's like my ideal coverage level where you can still see my freckles and everything, but it's able to kind of cancel out the discoloration of like my melasma and like underneath my eyes and stuff. It's a perfect canvas to start with for me. The next thing that I wanna talk about here is something that I raved about and I reach for a lot on my own time, but I don't talk about it that much in videos. And it is the Janessa Myricks. This is the Vision Flush in Nutcracker. And it is the most ideal one step bronzer for me. Like this color is, I compared it to my khaki lip liner. It really is like the same color as that lip liner, it has a fragrance. I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah, it smells kind of soapy. Interesting, I didn't know that. Fragrance. Where's my little brush that I like to use for this? The hierarchy of searching for something is always like right in front of you, slightly adjacent to right in front of you, and then we just check the floor. <laughs> Ah, because that's what happens all the time. Things just avalanche off of my desk. Well, before this dries on my face, I'm gonna go in with a BK101 here. This is typically one that I use for blush, but we will use it for my bronzer. But when I say it's like a one-step bronzer, I mean that like I can spread it other places than I would put a contour, you know? And it's it signed of, it sort of kind of accomplishes both at one time. Reminds me a little bit of Biscuit from Westman Atelier, but my goodness, it's more affordable than that. And it comes in a ton of shades. You don't have to get Nutcracker, you know? It's like blush. That's what I love about Janessa Myricks. All of her stuff is like, here is a formula and here are the colors. Use it however you please. Use it however you see fit. She leaves open so many doors of possibility as far as like the use cases for her products. I just feel like that is so freeing. You know, it's like, here, have like a box of paints. I'm sure that's not how everyone feels about such things, but that's why I'm here to bridge the gap. I am your um, tour guide, your uh, curator, curator. You guys, I watched 60 Minutes last night because getting old is awesome, TBH. Me and my husband, like as soon as we got pregnant, we were like, okay, so we are just going to admit that getting old is cool and we're gonna start watching 60 Minutes on Sundays. So we did, <laughs> it was like actually a conscious decision. They did a profile on Alessandra Michele, the uh, creative director for Gucci last night. Mm. My husband's like, oh my God, this is total chaos. What is going on? This guy is insane. And I was like, I am drinking this in. I want to work under him. He is the greatest. Oh my gosh. Everything he says is completely like resonating with me. Yeah. If you didn't watch it, it might be on like YouTube or something, but I would highly recommend it. If you like watching creative people be creative, he is just lovely. At one point he says, you know, she's like, well, but you know, do you ever feel like maybe there is like a limit or you're just gonna like run out of ideas or you know like it's it's all temporary and he he's with his beautiful italian accent he goes i like to feel insecure he's like i like to feel insecure it's kind of like life you know it, it nothing lasts forever and it's like you know insecurity can be the motivation to kind of stay hungry for creativity and for inspiration and i was just like that is my new motto for life, thank you. So yeah, I enjoyed that very much, Lee. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Ugh. And we have applied no powder yet, but everything dried down. It's just like such a really pretty hybrid texture kind of complexion situation so far. The next thing, this is just something that I do not talk about often enough because the formula is just so nice, but it's not available very many places. And I think that that's kind of what causes me to overlook it sometimes is that it's like not at Sephora, it's not at Beautylish, you know? And so 
Uh, I'm gonna tell you what it is. This is the Daniel Sandler watercolor cheek, uh, the gel cheek color. And I always say like not only in color, but also in formula, these mimic, but improve upon the formula of the Glossier Cloud Paint. It really is like grown up mature version. I posted on my Instagram yesterday about how I feel like I'm being alienated by product packaging lately. Not like, not like I'm arthritic and I can't open the package. Like, not like that. I'm not being like, you know, personally excluded. I'm just saying like, aesthetically speaking, it, just a lot of this stuff isn't resonating with me. And I, I wonder kind of like, you know, if, if this is what happens to everybody as you get older, I'm not sure. But like, I got a lot of messages back from people being like, yeah, absolutely. Because I don't want something, like it is actually prohibitive for me when packaging looks like really goofy and young or like it fell out of Delia's circa 2001 slash, it looks like it's trying to kind of mimic the like late seventies or something in terms of its aesthetic, like with the big bubbly letters and everything. And I'm just like, you don't have me with that. You might have, I mean, I'm sure that there's an audience for it, but like I look at a brand like Topicals, for example, and I'm like, I'd love to try their like, you know, spray lotion on my legs or something, or even like Euphoria. They sent this to me, you know, and they sent me all their stuff. And I'm just like, I am, not just like not interested in this packaging, I feel alienated by it, you know? I wonder if they really think about that because I am a packaging junkie and it is kind of funny how like you don't really get, <laughs> you don't really get the option of to choose the bad with the good or the good with the bad. It's like, you know, you decide that you're going to really like engage with the tactile experience of handling a product and working with it and when you have that really lovely experience, that also means that like when something isn't that lovely experience or even just kind of like an ambivalent experience, I will take ambivalent. It's when something is just like actively <laughs> offending me, I guess. Um, I don't know, it's, it's interesting how much that affects me more than I thought that it would. All right, <laughs> this is probably one of my number, one of my number one, I'm just gonna, you know, speak in hyperbole again, one of my number one underrated products is the Natasha Denona Puff Paint. I'm on a personal mission to get this not underrated. <laughs> I am on a personal mission to get it accurately rated. So this is the shade Daria and it is such a unique kind of melon shade and I'm going to use that as my local color here. Just kind of bring a little bit of freshness on top of the Daniel Sandler. It is the most agreeable, again, hybrid formula. All of these kind of dry down in a beautiful way, but the Daniel Sandler will take on whatever texture you have on underneath it. So it's like, it'll take on uh, a really nice dewy texture or it will play really nicely on top of powder. And now we have such a pretty kind of gradient going. And yeah, it's, you know, it's high saturation the same way that it kind of always is at this point in my makeup routine. And I kind of go backwards, you know? So I don't end up with a whole lot more makeup on my face than I need to. I allow myself to go a little bit extreme in the blush direction and then back out of it with powder. And a powder that I do not talk about enough is the one that Thrive came out with. They came out with a pressed powder a few months ago and it's in a ton of shades. This is in light and it actually comes with like a sponge and everything if you actually wanted to apply it as a coverage product, but I'm just going to be using it today selectively the way that I do to kind of like knock back shine. But it's really nice that it does have pigment to it. Sorry, I'm looking for my brush, this one. It's nice that it has pigment to it because it helps me blur like that harsh line underneath my eyes that I get from putting my blush on sometimes. And it does add a touch of coverage kind of right where I need it. I love the, I mean, I know that there are a lot of TikTok trends and some of them are applying an entire bottle of foundation to your face and like working backwards from there, which is just like, it will never be okay, ever, <laughs> okay? But uh, I do like that some of the TikTok trends that I've seen circulating from makeup have to do with debunking a lot of the like, you know, concealer trends and everything that only look good on camera because I love working with the way that light plays off of your skin. That is, I think, one of the, let's say underrated, underappreciated techniques in makeup is understanding that your whole face in real life, right, doesn't have the same texture to it and the way that the light plays on it, you are 
distorting that when you put makeup on, right? You are kind of taking control over nature. And then you can kind of exaggerate those things. You can say, well, I want my cheeks to look extra healthy, so I'm going to make sure they have a really nice balmy dewy glow. But in order for that to read to the eye, you do want to kind of play with a little bit of mattification where you need it so that it doesn't draw the eye to a place you don't want it to. It's all about playing with light. It's all about playing with light. So all of these places that I feel like, sure, I'm gonna put powder like here because I tend to kind of have makeup gather there, but also because I just don't want a shiny chin <laughs> distracting from the other things that I'm working so hard to achieve. And even just a touch up here. The next thing that I'm gonna use, and I use this off camera, all the time and I never use it on camera outside of the first like review video that I did of it where I you know gave it a glowing review but it is the Hindash Beautopsy palette. If we're talking about artistry here, if we're talking about thinking of makeup in a practical sense, in a painterly take your mind outside of what the product is meant to do in terms of like what part of your face it goes on and just think about like color and texture, it, this is that. I have hair stuck to my face and it's driving me butt crazy dude. Oh my God. So if you're unfamiliar with this palette, and mine's a little bit gnarly, it has these gradients in it. And you know, if that terrifies you, just think of them as, what would that be? One, two, three, four, five, 12 shades, you know, and they just kind of blend towards the middle instead of having individual pans. And they can be used for anything. They can be used, you know, for contour, eyeshadow, bronzer, blush, what have you but I am just gonna use it on my eyes today. And what I really enjoy about this is like you can really load your brush with these pigments and they're not crazy. Like they're not going to be insanely high pigment. And if you do just barely dip your brush, you're, you're gonna get like this wash of color. You can use this palette. See what I mean? Like that's kind of like a really, really aggressive dip. And then that's just kind of like what I would consider to be like a normal dip. <laughs> and you can use this to achieve something where you're literally just playing with shadow and light and no one would really know that you're wearing eyeshadow because they're all matte. It really is an artistry palette in that sense where it's like meant to create first and foremost, a believable light and shadow contour and highlight that the eye perceives as skin, but then, you know, it has kind of shades in there where you can go a little bit more exaggerated, but I just find that it is so incredibly practical and the formula is so finely milled. So I'm just using Feel right here, which is just a beautiful neutral brown. And man, I am super like, especially compared to Hindash, I'm super sloppy. You watch him, he has like a surgeon's steady hand. He's amazing. And the looks that he does are just immaculate. He really understands the contour of the face of anyone's face and like how to really accentuate the light and the, and the shadow. So that's the white shade right there. Look at that. Look at how that achieves such like a believable highlight on my skin while kind of blurring where I haven't like tweezed my eyebrows and stuff like that. But we're happy with no sparkle. I get my options later when I want to put sparkle on my face. This is all about just creating an illusion. So I'm using tan lines right here, tan and lines. And I think that the temptation when you look at a palette like this is, okay, he's designed this with all these shades. I need to use them all. No, not necessarily. Just like any other palette, you make decisions that day as to, you know, what look you're going for and that's it. You don't have to like dip into the pink just to dip into the pink just because it's there. I do like wet paint though, especially for people who do have like a need for a little bit more yellow than white kind of thing. And in order to still get a brightened shade, you can like mix them together, which I think is really nice. So I'm gonna do that a little bit and just get a little bit of warmth. So yeah, see what that does is coolness is going to recede from the eye, warmth is going to come towards the eye. So all I'm doing is just adding a touch of a warm white to a regular white, and I'm putting that right here, and your eye is not going to say, there's yellow right there. Your eye is just going to say, oh, that's coming towards me. Same thing with the lid. And then you can take something in the crease. See right here, this one's gray, this is real. And I can just take a little bit of that gray and touch it in my crease. And the eye does not necessarily perceive gray. The eye perceives shadow. 
When I tell you guys I nerd out about this stuff, like I hope that this is satisfying for people from a theory standpoint because a lot of people are like, can you do a video that's just on like color and texture and temperature? And I'm like, what does that even look like? <laughs> you know, like that sounds like a, a, an entire masterclass and I'm not even sure I know enough to do that, but like, Maybe this is, maybe this is helpful. I hope this is helpful. So yeah, you know, you would look at my eyes. Now you would say, yes, she's wearing eyeshadow, of course. But at the same time, like all of those are kind of colors that already exist in my complexion. And so it doesn't enter the room before me. Now I'm going to put on something that enters the room before me. Okay, like it's, it's gonna happen, but that is a nice basic starting point. Something else that does not get talked about enough. Oh my gosh, are these Vesca freaking, what are they called, Moonlit Dream? Yes, the cream eyeshadows. These are one of the most innovative, and I have not seen anything else like them before or since, innovative glitter liquid eyeshadows because they dry down and then they go to a like powder finish that you can then manipulate with a brush. They do everything. Why don't people talk about these more? This was something that I literally forced Kate the Great to, to buy when we did our collab and she was like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Do we wanna go purple? I pulled purple and gold. So the purple is Vela and the gold is Karina. And I'm just going to swatch those and we will make a call. Oh, I think it's Karina today because I'm wearing such like creamy neutrals already. I'm gonna start by just tapping it on my eyelid here. And I'm going actually a lot thinner than I typically would because you can achieve a full wet look with this. But I am using a very, very tiny amount and not even putting it on my whole lid because I kind of want to look burnished. You know, I want to just like achieve a little bit of that texture without it just being like, overwhelming to the rest of the contour that I just worked on. And kind of in the spirit of what I was talking about that I'm really excited about from Lisa Eldridge's new eyeshadows, which I ordered all of, <laughs> I'm gonna go with a little bit of it on a little baby brush right underneath my eyes. She has a shade called Lauren. That's like kind of an orange gold and she uses it on her lower lash line and I died a little bit inside. I was like, I need it. I need it. And I'm going a little heavy there, but I can take something once it dries and still buff it out a little. So I'm gonna throw on a brow here real quick. I'm gonna use the Refi pencil. had a chance to dry a little bit. I'm gonna grab this little brush that I just got from Well People. This is their blending eye brush. It's just, it looks bigger than it is. Like it actually works really beautifully for detail like this to just kind of buff and blend. And I'm just creating a little bit of an outer V with that dried Vesca. Like that. Now I'm gonna throw on an eyeliner real quick and I'm actually gonna still use the Hindash palette because it functions pretty well, but I'm going to use Intra Fatum, kind of the combo there, but you can, you can see I've done that quite a bit. That's exactly what I use that for every time as an eyeliner. But I do kind of mix them because I can get a little bit more of a brown line and your eye might not even really notice that it's brown, not black, but trust me, if it were like really blue-black, it would look bizarre on me. Same reason I wear brown mascara usually. Easy peasy. A little bit of drama. I am tempted to use a little bit of this as blush. I'm gonna go into Boy Wonder here. The pans are big enough to use as, like put a blush brush in. One little dip and it gave me all that lovely pigment. Isn't that nice? Now, 
Something that you guys do see me use quite a bit, but I think that it is still underrated, is the Salt New York highlight. I've tried so many highlights. And I've tried a lot of cream highlights lately. And I do still really like the Beauty Pie one because it works, it functions really beautifully as an actual highlight. This is, I use it more as like a, a way of manipulating the light. I'm just gonna take that same Beauty Pie brush, and dip it in there, this is why I need so many of them. And it's like not even necessarily like a big deal in terms of, you know, knowing that you have it on the brush or anything, but it just serves as kind of a, a beautiful blurring mixing medium that helps to kind of break that line up underneath my eye without adding coverage. It just adds brightness. And I have tried this with other formulas and they just muck my makeup up. They're like too heavy or too present or too obvious and it's just so subtle, so subtle. All right, before we go in and do like my mascara and everything, the final things that I wanna talk about here that are underrated, that like, again, I don't think I did a good enough job making a big deal out of. This is the Hydra Lip Tint from Elamasca. It's this funky thing that's like orange, blue, and like coral. And then when it mixes on your lips, it's not a color changing like mood lipstick. All of those turn hot pink, okay? I'm just gonna dispel any of those rumors, but this, the colors mix together. So you can see there's like a blue stripe on my, on my lip for a minute, but when they mix together, they make this beautiful, like cool tone purple, but it's like in a balm kind of formula. And it smells like vanilla. And it's just kind of everything, you know, it's really, really good. And then, the other thing, and I'm not even sure that I would necessarily wear these together, <laughs> but the Lawless. This is just so good. This is the Lawless Forget the Filler, and a lot of Lawless stuff has really not impressed me, but not only is this incredibly glossy, but it is actually effective at plumping without making my whole face turn red. And she now has shades in this, but I bought it when it was just clear, and I just really like it. It's a little on the sticky side, but not too bad. And like I said, I really enjoy playing with texture and the way that the light hits my skin. And I think that that's a really big part of that for me is, you know, a very, very glossy lip because then I can have the light hit my cheeks, it can hit my eyes, it can hit my lips, and then the rest of it I can kind of just like, you know, subtly powder. <laughs> so let's throw on some mascara. Okay, and final touch as always is going to be a um, makeup spray, but I'm gonna wait for my lashes to dry real quick. I'll move you guys out. I feel like I need just a little kiss of something cool toned on my cheeks. Saint Cosmetics just sent me a bunch of stuff. They're sending me my correct shade and the foundation and that's why the video is taking forever, but I do really enjoy this stuff. And this is their Radiance Finish Blush in the shade Frosé. And look at, look at, look at, look at that mauve guys. Look at that just like cool, kind of mucky lavender. Now, I have to be very, very careful with this. We just do a whisper because it's pretty matte and it shows up pretty easily, but it's just going to bring my lips and my cheeks together a little bit, just to have that little tiny bit of cool tone. See, isn't that, isn't that cool? So when I say cool tone, I'm saying like, okay, so for example, just cause these are the two that I have sitting next to me, Milani Luminoso, one that I absolutely love. I love to pop this on when I need warmth, but like, look, look at the difference, right? You have like a nice melon that's very, you know, bright. It's got like yellow and peach in it. Like that's gonna be warm. And this has got like almost gray in it. And it's a purple to the eye, but it's got just a muddiness to it and also uh, blue, like a lot of blue, so. And any color can be cool or warm. You can even have a cool red or a warm blue. <laughs> you know, a warm blue is gonna have like a lot of yellow in it and a, uh, a warm or a cool red is going to have a lot of blue in it, but your eye might still read red kind of thing. And that's why they say like, you know, blue based reds for like lipsticks and stuff. Any color, blue, purple, like those aren't necessarily like the only cool toned colors. Like they don't have to be pure in value in order to be cool toned. It is also about the relation to your skin, like something being cooler than your skin. A lot of times my skin will cancel out cool tones. And so I will end up with like a 
pinker version of something or sometimes a, uh, a redder version of something because, or even yellower, because my skin tends to cancel out purple, but that's why I do kind of lean a little bit cooler a lot of times is because I end up with more flattering pigments that way. If I were to lean all the way towards like the yellow that's in my undertones, things would just kind of appear like shocking and unnatural on my skin. So it's all about experimentation, <laughs> unfortunately. But hopefully me demonstrating things like that is helpful. Like that's literally why I have a channel. <laughs> why I make things where I'm talking to you and applying things, not just, you know, talking about them or like posting pictures of my face on Instagram is because seeing something in action makes all the difference. Now I'm going to use a little bit of finishing spray here. I love this. It's really, really, really expensive. The Hourglass Soft Focus Setting Spray. I like this because like, it's so little actual product on the skin, but it's so effective. You can barely even feel it and you have control over what part of your face you put it on. Cause I like it just on my cheeks. You know, I don't want it necessarily like under my eyes and like on my eyeshadow and stuff. I just kind of want that nice glycerin-y finish right there on my cheeks and maybe a little bit on my forehead. So yeah, guys, I was super, super excited to go through my collection today and finally have a way of composing a look using these products that I am like passionately in love with, but for whatever reason, like YouTube and its algorithm and the need for new, new, new all the time, like search terms were not going to ever be hungry <laughs> for these products but I wanted to put together a look that's like, hey, this is really practical. It's not a whole lot of actual product on my face. And it's just products that really do so much work. Each individual formula does so much of the heavy lifting for you. And you end up with like a very fun and easy face of makeup at the end. And it's what I go towards when I'm doing my makeup that is kind of unexciting in the best ways possible, right? My Mars is in Taurus. <laughs> I just thrive on reliability. I love it. I love being able to count on something. And this is all like, there's a full face of products that I use all the time because I know that I can count on them. So that is why I, I just, I just feel genuinely beautiful in this look. And uh, I hope that you guys appreciated it. If you did, do give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching today. And thank you also to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video today. I hope that you guys will check out the link below and check out their amazing holiday sale. And I love you so, 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 so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.